Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go through the books that I read in February. I don't feel like I had a very successful month compared to January. If you watched my January roundout you would have seen that I read six books in January and in February I've only read three books but I'm going to go through them. Um, before I do I just want to say a massive thank you to the lovely ladies that have been sending me proofs and advances and gifted copies um, recently. I really really do appreciate it and I can't wait to read them all. So before I get into the books that I read in February I'm going to try and go through quickly some of the amazing books that I've been gifted. So the first one was gifted to me by, by Tara McAvoy and it's this one, it's called The Limits of My Language. Um, I personally picked this one because I really really like the sound of it. Um, it looks quite small so hopefully it'll be quite quick to read but I'm sure really really insightful. So this was published on the 4th of February. Uh, next up, and this is going to be the next book that I read because this comes out on the 4th of March, this is The Eighth Girl. Um, I believe it's about someone that has multiple personality disorder and so it's about the eighth girl, her eighth personality. So it says, one woman, many personas, but which one is telling the truth? It's quite a chunky book, um, it is a hardback and this comes out, as I said, on the 4th of March. So I'm really, really excited to read this. Um, this again was by Tara McAvoy at Pushkin Press. Now, I don't know if you, about you guys, but I watched It's a Sin recently. Oh, I absolutely sobbed. I found it so heartbreaking, but so, so important. And the lovely Isabel has sent me Living and Loving in the Age of AIDS. Um, it's a memoir. This is an uncorrected proof. This comes out um, on the 13th of April, 2021. Um, I also really really like this cover like that spine is just beautiful that color. I'm such a I, I love pink It's my favorite color Um, so as a kind of follow-up from watching it's a sin I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading about this. So thank you Isabel Um, also from Isabel at Watkins press is ahead of her time Um, this is about like being a woman entrepreneur, which I absolutely love obviously starting my own youtube channel, etc This also comes out on the 13th of April. This is by um Judy how I don't know I think people pronounce it differently, but Pyatkus? Pi, pi, Pyatkus? I don't know. Um, so it says how a one woman startup became a global publishing brand. So Watkins Publishing publishes this on the 13th of April. I'm really, really excited to read this. It's quite a thin one, again, paperback, but yeah, thank you, Isabel. This next one is such, such, such a beautiful cover. Um, I really, really like just the simplisticness of it. Simplisticness? Simpl simplicity of it. Um, it's called Grown Ups. Oh, I'm sorry about my nails. I just realised I haven't painted them in a very while. Um, this is called Grown Ups. Um, it says, what kind of adult are you without a family of your own? Um, this coming in June. So this this publishes on the 13th of June. Um, again, I just really, really like the sound of this one. Um, so it says, other people's children always everywhere. Um, the hilarious, devastating novel about sibling rivalry and modern motherhood. Um, again, really, really small one. So I hope that will be a super, super quick read. Um, thank you to Tara McAvoy again for sending me that one. Then the next one is from Christina Story from Alison and Bugsy. This is Love and Fury. I actually really like this cover, although this is not, I know this isn't how it's gonna actually look. Um, I just really like that sort of double tone there. Um, I don't normally read historical fiction, but I actually really like the sound of this one. Um, this comes out on the 17th of June, 2021. Also going back on the point of reading historical fiction, one of my interviews that is coming out, um, when I asked him what book should everyone read, he said the book that like you don't want to read, basically, the book that you don't normally read, that's not your typical genre or whatever. And so that has really opened my eyes and I'm trying to read stuff that I don't wouldn't normally read. So yeah, I'm excited to read Love and Fury there. So thank you. And then finally, uh, this one came the other day. This was such a clever marketing campaign. If you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have known I post about this because it was just very, very clever. Um, this is called Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead, which is a bit morbid. Um, but along with this packaging, um, you get little stickers and you can change the title of the book. So I said, everyone in this book will someday be happy. And um, I thought that was such a clever idea. I mean, the example that they give on the little instruction sheet is everyone in this lockdown will someday be drunk. Um, I just really like that. You also get some pins. So one of the ones that's like, no worries if not, which I mean, I say that every single day all the time. Um, so on the back of this one it says, meet Gilda, she's approaching 30, an inept receptionist, a lapsed lesbian in her overdraft, and and she cannot stop thinking about death. Um, I have the feeling this is going to be quite like a funny read, um, so I'm really looking forward to that. So this comes out on the 8th of July, so thank you to Sophie at Atlantic Books for sending me this one. 
So now that I've gone through all the wonderful proofs that I've received, and thank you again so much everyone for sending them, I'm going to go through what I read in February. So I started off strong with Kylie Reed's Such a Fun Age, which Bloomsbury publishes, um, and funny story, I ended up buying two of these, so I put it on Twitter and sent out the other one to someone else, because I don't know why I ended up reading, buying two. I think I do that thing where you add things to your basket the night before, and then I ordered it without realising, and then ordered it again the next day. Um, anyway, I really, really did enjoy this one. Um, it was talked about a lot, and I just read Normal People, which you, if you watch my if you watch my journey round out, you'd have found that I didn't really like Normal People. I thought it was overhyped, so I was really concerned that this was also going to be one where it's overhyped. I didn't like it, but I did like it. Um, in my little book tracker thing, um, yeah. So it's about a black babysitter who babysits for a white family, and then when she's out babysitting her family, she gets stopped and she's accused of kidnapping the child. Um, and so it's kind of like the after effects of that and how the mother starts treating her differently etc so I said it's quite like easy to read and understand I didn't really know what to expect I didn't really know what it's going to be about the thing that confused me a bit was about it being called about it saying um, such a fun age because I, I thought it was more going to be about coming of age and um, yeah I mean, I mean it was more to do with the babysitting so it's written from both point of views which I did actually quite like normally I don't I'm not a massive fan of that, or it would take me a while to get into that, but I did quite like that. And um, so it covers like a betrayal of, of trust. I said it was quite well developed characters because there's only really a few in there. It's quite well developed. So it's about race, economic status, and privilege. Um, also, I've just joined a book club as well, which is really exciting. I've never joined a book club before, which um, I'm quite surprised at, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be talking about this one in our book club soon so looking forward to that and see what other people think i did google some reviews after it as well and i had mixed opinions like some people talking about the whole race side of it and the whole um economic and status side of it um but yes and the next one i read which i think is arguably one of my favorite books ever is the rosie project i absolutely loved this this really didn't take me long to read at all because when i was reading it i just wanted to keep keep reading it oh and i can't believe it's taken me so long to read this i mean this came out like forever ago and i know everyone say it says it's really good but absolutely loved it it was written from the point of view of this like genesis is that a genesis i don't know how to pronounce it um but it's, it's about like a scientist and he's um like a university lecturer as well and I, I mean, it, it's almost obvious that he's got some kind of learning disability as well, or um, he takes people very literally. Um, he doesn't really understand jokes or anything like that. And I think that, um, without being offensive, that makes it a really funny read. There's things in there that um, really do make you literally laugh out loud. And I just absolutely loved it. And it was about um, him trying, again, like I didn't know why it was called The Rosie Project. I didn't know what it was about. And sometimes I like doing that as well, just seeing for myself what it's about. And it's about how he has decided that he lives by science all his life, all the time. And he wants to find love for the first time. And so he does it almost like an experiment. So he calls it the wife project. And he essentially sends out like a survey to loads of people and gets them to um, gets them to answer these questions. And he decides if he, they, if he wants them to be his wife or not. And then along the way, he meets Rosie. And it's about him discovering her real dad and it's just fantastic and i can't wait to read the next two in the series as well this one i mean this is a solid five out of five it's written from a man's point of view as well which i think a lot of books are or definitely a lot of books i've read are written from a female's point of view so it was really really nice to see it from a man's point of view as well and then finally i mean again i haven't had a very successful month so i haven't actually finished this yet but i have been reading leave publishing now with that beautiful cover thank you to amy donegan for sending me a copy of this i really really do appreciate it especially considering i know these are so almost limited edition um, everyone has been wanting one but this is the other black girl i think some people keep thinking it's called leave now but it's called the other black girl and it's about it's it's based in the publishing industry which is really um interesting as a word for it um it, i haven't read anything before that's written from a publishing point of view and it's about talking about how you know is, is the publishing industry racist because it's predominantly all white women and there's a black girl that works there and then an another one comes on the, uh, the other black girl and it's sort of saying like is that is that too many she starts receiving notes saying that she needs to leave and it's about that i am enjoying it so far it has taken me longer to read than i thought it would just because i didn't sort of realize how big it was and how many i mean it's it's sort of 350 pages um 
I, I do kind of like the storyline so far. It's quite intriguing. It's making me think differently. The thing that I don't really understand yet is the other random characters in there. And I'm sure, I mean, I've got a little bit left to go. I've got that much left to go. Um, it's about a quarter or less. Um, so perhaps it will pan out then. But I don't understand so far about the other people's point of view. So in the like in the front page thing where it tells you what it's about, it tells you about like three other black women as well. So um, Shani, Diana, and Kendra Ray. And I don't yet see their relevance. I, I see like where they play a part because they like, work at the same publishing house or an author or whatever. But I don't see the meaning of them being in the story yet. I am enjoying it and it's teaching me something. And I've got a little bit left to go as well. So I will go keep you up keep you guys updated probably on twitter on how i found it i mean yeah that is it i only read yeah almost three in february so not really a successful month to be honest um the next one i want to read is the eighth girl hopefully that one won't take me too long to read i have so many books now to read it's actually a joke i feel like i don't know if there's anyone else but i just feel like i'm never gonna get around to them all and then i keep either being like gifted more or i'm buying more which i shouldn't but i want to and yeah it's just i need to just spend like a few weeks out and just read solidly um so i would love to know if you've read any of these books or you want to read any of these books would love to hear your thoughts on it and um, thank you so much again to all the lovely ladies that gifted me some of these free books um i really really can't wait to read some of these so have a lovely weekend everyone and see you in my next video bye